All right, Alexander, let's talk about Erdogan and Sweden and NATO. And uh, the latest on this story is that Erdogan has told the media during his press conference in Vilnius that uh, Sweden has to get uh, their entry into NATO, has to get approved by the parliament in Turkey. And that's going to happen in October. Meanwhile, it looks like Erdogan and Biden did not uh, have a very good meeting. Yeah. We've said on many videos that, that Erdogan does not like Biden and Biden does not like Erdogan. And I think it came through at the Vilnius summit. Yeah. All of this is about mainly about the F-16s. Yeah. Yes, you have the EU promises. Yes, the visa stuff and the customs union. Mm -hmm. um, Erdogan, I'm sure, has heard these promises from the EU many, many times before, yeah. for many decades. But it is really starting to become clear that what's really irking Erdogan, what he really wants wants to resolve is this F-16 thing. Yeah. And um, it doesn't look like that's getting resolved. And so Sweden and NATO, yes, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? Well, this, this, is, this is classic Erdogan. And can, can I just say, I mean, we warned people on the Duran, you and I, we warned people, you know, don't take too seriously. Erdogan's uh, statements that he is absolutely opposed under any circumstances to Sweden joining NATO, you know, until you know they change their policies on the Kurds or whatever. The man just bargains. He bargains incessantly. For him, it is transactional. But for him also, this F-16 thing has become um, absolutely a test of America's, of the US, of the West's true intentions towards Turkey. Now, the background to this is Turkey was part of the F-35 program. Then after the 2016 coup attempt, uh, which Erdogan defeated, uh, Erdogan did this deal with the Russians to buy the S-400 anti-aircraft missile system. The Americans then booted Turkey off the F-35 program. That caused an awful lot of rupture and anger between uh, Erdogan and the Americans. Um, the Turkish military, I suspect, uh, were not happy about just being left with their old F-16s, which are becoming increasingly outdated and are certainly no match to the Russian Air Force in Syria. And before long, to the Iranian Air Force as well, which is going to be re-equipped with Russian Suhoi 35 fighter jets, far more advanced than the F-16s that Turkey has. So Erdogan has been saying, and the Americans have been promising, well, if you won't give us F-35s, give us the most advanced version of the F-16 with the most advanced radar. OK, it's not got all the bells and whistles and stealth capabilities of the F-35, but it is a potent and effective modern fighter jet, and we can, we will have a convincing air force which could, at least to some extent, present a credible counter to the air forces of Russia and Syria, and potentially of Iran. And that was the deal that Erdogan was looking for. I mean, he talks about the Kurds, he talks about terrorism, he talks about, uh, you know, Turkey joining the EU if uh, um, Sweden joins NATO. The moment he said that, the moment he said on, you know, going on, on his travels to Vilnius that he was proposing a swap Turkey in, into the EU in return for Sweden into NATO. I knew he was up for a deal. I mean, he, he doesn't really believe that Turkey will join the EU. I don't think he really wants Turkey to join the EU. But he talks about that. He gets extracts some more concessions from the Europeans along the way. But the big one is the F-16s. So what happened was that in order to get through the Vilnius summit, Joe Biden tells him, don't worry, you'll get your F-16s. All you have to do is agree to get 
to, to, to agree to Sweden joining NATO. And so Erdogan comes along. He says, you know, I'm lifting my objections. I'm going to recommend to the Turkish parliament that Sweden's admission into NATO be approved. And then, of course, he has another meeting with Joe Biden because Joe Biden has got what he wanted. He's got Erdogan's agreement um, to have Sweden in NATO. And then Joe Biden goes back <laughs> on what Erdogan thought he promised. He says, well, actually, I, you know, I can't commit to provide you with F-16s. It depends on Congress at the end of the day. And Congress is a different thing altogether. And Turkey has its um, critics and opponents there. And I can't be certain that uh, Congress will agree to provide you with the F-16s. So Erdogan is furious. It's a very difficult meeting. As you rightly say, they don't like each other. But then nobody likes Joe Biden. I mean, that's now, you know, uh, a reality. There's been, by the way, more information about this. There was a very, very angry meeting, apparently, between Blinken and MBS in Saudi Arabia, in which MBS pretty, made, pretty much made it clear that the Saudis don't like and trust Biden. Nobody likes or trusts Biden. We said this. The British media is now reporting this. We were saying it long before, but even the British media is now saying it. Axios is now saying it. So anyway, Erdogan has this meeting with Biden. He storms out. He says, well, I can't guarantee that the Turkish parliament, which is only going to meet to look into this in October, is going to, uh, is going to go through with this uh, 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 Swedish membership of NATO after all. Now, I have to say, I think that eventually Sweden will get into NATO Erdogan, Erdogan, having made this concession in Vilnius, he can't really go back on it. And But whether he'll get the F-16s is another matter. If he doesn't get the F-16s, then he's going to be open to criticism in Turkey itself, especially, I suspect, from the military there. And he's going to be looking for, looking for aircraft, looking for fighter jets. And... He might try and get them from Sweden, which does produce very good fighter jets, apparently, the Gripen fighter jets. Or he might get them from the Europeans, though that's less likely. If he can't get them from Sweden or the Europeans or the Americans, his only real option is to go to the Russians. Yeah, and so during his press conference, he uh, he dangled the possibility of, of a meeting with Putin. Exactly. Of course, Peskov. He said that uh, right now there's nothing scheduled exactly. between uh, Erdogan and Putin. Exactly. Um, and that's exactly, that's, that's, that's the game Erdogan plays. I mean, he plays this all the time. He says, look, if you aren't going to give me what, it, what I want, well, I will get closer to my dear friend Vladimir Putin. And he'll supply me with the fighter jets I want. And of course, you're already unhappy about the fact that I'm buying S-400 missiles from him. How much more unhappy will you be if I'm also placing orders for Suhoi 35s? That's the, that's the game he always yeah. plays. I mean, it's, it's, I, 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 I think in the long run, this is, this is not good for Turkey, actually. I think this is, and it's not probably good for Erdogan himself, but he does this compulsively. He plays this game all the time. He was angry with Putin because it looks like Putin isn't going to review the grain deal um, on Monday. And so the result is that he embraces Zelensky, says he's going to support Zelensky's NATO membership, is going to open a uh, factory for Bayraktar drones in Ukraine making Bayraktar drones, useless drones from a factory that will be immediately destroyed. So he does this, but he does this basically in order to annoy Putin. He then cuts this deal, as he thinks, with Biden. Biden might not deliver, so he tells Biden, I'm going to get close to Putin. So, I mean, you know, this, is, this is the way Erdogan works. And um, because Turkey is a big country 
and an important country, countries like Russia, like leaders like Putin, are forced to play along with this. But ultimately, they're very exhausted and tired with it. And when Erdogan finally departs the scene, which he will, provided the Russians have got what they've, you know, established a good, secure relationship with Turkey, they'll be glad to see him go. And um, I was talking for, to someone from China, by the way, and Turkey has at various times also sought good relations with China. And she told me, this person, who was Chinese, that um, in China, Erdogan isn't liked very much there either, for exactly the same reason, because he's always playing these games with the Chinese, which the Chinese are as frustrated by as everyone else is. But there it is, that's Erdogan. He's never going to change. That's what he does. He haggles, he bargains all the time. He's always looking to get, um, um, you know, rewards. He does sometimes get them. But in the meantime, he loses goodwill. He loses trust. I don't think anybody trusts her to one very much. Yeah, it must be exhausting to deal with him. I, oh. I know it's exhausting covering him. That's for Absolutely, sure. Yeah. But uh, you, yeah, you know, uh, he, he plays the game well, but yeah. he plays you know, he takes it, tremendous risks. He and, takes, and one of these days, it's it's, it's going to hurt him really yes, bad. I agree. He, he almost came close in that coup yeah. in 2000. What was it? 2016? 2016. Coup attempt? Yeah, so it's 2016 yeah. it was, yeah. No, absolutely. He he plays this game all the time, and it is exhausting, and it is exhausting dealing with him, and it's exhausting covering him, and I, you know, even Putin himself finally is pressed about this in an interview. He did say that he found dealing with Erdogan extremely difficult. The person who's come closest to developing a relationship with Erdogan is Putin, but even Putin, he has to face these problems with Erdogan all the time. And he's put in a lot of work. I mean, they talk to each other constantly. constantly so, yeah. Yeah. All right, we will end it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, and Rockfin. And go to the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code. Good day. Take care.